In this video, we're going to talk about cortisol and cold exposure. I got a question about how your cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, are impacted by the ice bath. And it's important because cortisol levels in people who suffer from PTSD are chronically low. Now you heard chronically high cortisol is bad for you because it's a stress hormone. But as it turns out, people with PTSD have chronically low cortisol. And if you boost their cortisol prior to therapies for PTSD, they respond faster, they resolve quicker. So if we understood how the ice bath relates to cortisol, we could perhaps prepare people to resolve their PTSD using the ice bath and some other combination of trauma therapy. So let's take a look at three papers. I'm going to invite you here to my desk and show you how I sort out issues like this. Here's the first one. This is the cold presser test. And if you remember from some of my other talks, the cold presser test is where you put your hand in freezing cold water. There's ice in there. You do it for as long as you can. And psychologists use this test. It's a validated instrument for measuring stress response. So in this study, they use the cold presser test and they measure cortisol. This is just in the saliva. Cortisol goes up. This is the control. I forget what their control is, but these people are not doing cold exposure. Just these people are doing the cold exposure and it's just one hand in a bowl of ice water. And look at this, 20 minutes later, look at what is happening to the salivary cortisol levels that go way up. So you might conclude from this paper that, well, cold exposure is gonna boost cortisol, but not so fast. I ran it past some of my colleagues at ASU who know more about such things than I do, and they say cortisol is really difficult to measure. The salivary test might be unreliable, and we know that the cold presser test is a partial cold immersion and that whole body is not equal to partial. The body has different responses when it's partially immersed and when it's whole body immersed, which kind of makes sense. So we have to wait. We have to wait for Milda Iamonte's research team. Here's a new paper from 2021. International Journal of Hyperthermia. I bet you didn't know there was such a thing. I didn't know there was such a thing. And from the Institute of Sports Science in Lithuania, Milda Iamonte conducts these experiments in which she puts her subjects in a tub of 14 degree Celsius water. That's 57 Fahrenheit. And maybe you don't think of that as too cold. It's not an ice bath. It's more like a cold plunge, but she does blood samples. These are not saliva samples. So the scale is not comparable to the graph that we saw earlier. Take a look at what happens. This is whole body for 10 minutes, 14 degrees C in the tub. The control group, they just sat in the tub at 24 degrees C. Maybe there's a towel over them or something like that. No cold water anywhere. And look at what happens. Cortisol in the experimental group, this is pre and this is post cold exposure. It goes up. And for some reason, cortisol in the control group goes down. These tests were conducted in the morning, sort of first thing in the morning during business hours. You bring the subjects in, you get them cold, you draw their blood, and you measure this big boost in cortisol. Then as they go throughout the day, cortisol goes down and it goes back up. In both the control and the experimental subjects, it follows the same pattern, but the cortisol in the people who did the cold exposure, just 10 minutes in the tub, 14 degrees C, they always remain a little bit higher than the control. And Milda has these indicators to show you uncertainty bars where the statistical significance lies. And she says this is a statistically significant result. That sounds more convincing than ever that the ice bath is going to increase your cortisol levels, at least for the next 24 hours. So maybe this hypothesis that the ice bath will boost cortisol and be some sort of a pre-treatment that primes those with PTSD for um, increased response, positive response to their therapy is promising. But this one is hot off the press in the Journal of Cryobiology. You're going to notice 
the same lead author. This is the same group, and it's the same study protocol in which they put people in a tub of cold water. They did it a little bit differently this time. There were two protocols. The first one was six reps of 20 minutes each with a resting period between them. They called that 170 CWI. But the other one was sort of the same old 10 minutes. It's all 14 degrees. So this is six times 20, and this is one by 10. And for those of you that are used to ice baths, the six by 20 shouldn't shock you. At 57 degrees Fahrenheit, it hardly seems like we're getting much of a cold dose at all. But if these are naive subjects, and they're not cold acclimated, and they're not winter swimmers, then I know there's a lot of people out there who would respond to 57 whole body with a sense of stress. Let's see what happens. You gotta find the blue dots to find the people with cold exposure. And remember, there are two types. This is the six by 20, it's right here. And what happened to them after they did their cold exposure in the morning? Cortisol barely budged. If anything, it went down. But what happened to the people who only did the one by 10 exposure? There, sure enough, it went up. What we have here is an ambiguous response. We can't conclude anything really about cold exposure as far as dose response. Usually when you see an increased dose result in an increased response, it increases your confidence that there's something going on between the independent and the dependent variable. But here, an increased dose did not result in an increase in cortisol response. And what happened to the control people? Well, take a look at the people who are in this 170 tub. Way down. Their cortisol levels plummeted. And the people who just did the 1 by 10 in the tub with no cold water, they came down too until an hour after they were identical. And we would expect them to be identical. They've just been hanging out with any cold exposure at all. Sure enough, the cold people are elevated. And they're elevated until you get to about four hours after in which it's very difficult to discern whether there's a dose response, whether there's any response at all. What's going on? We now have three different studies, but in particular, two by the same group of researchers using mild cold exposure and some evidence, remember these scales match, that the ice bath will boost the cortisol levels. But what's really curious here is the pre subjects, the ones who happen to go into the six by 20 group here that started out at about 410, that would have mapped here in her previous work in the 2021 study. In other words, these people, they started out higher than any other group that we've seen. And maybe that explains why they get no boost at all. The people who started lower did get a boost. And in general, sitting around in the tub, I guess it's relaxing. Cortisol levels are coming down throughout the day anyway. Everybody's coming down. But we see some sort of signal that uh, the cold exposure will boost the cortisol levels unless cortisol is already high. What does this tell us? It is possible that cortisol is normalized by the cold, not boosted. That is, if you start high, you don't go up. If you start low, you will go up. It's possible that the cold exposure modulates cortisol to bring it to some norm rather than boost. We've seen this with blood sugar. If your blood sugar is too high, you're type two diabetic, you're insulin resistant, the cold exposure going into the ice bath will drop it down to about 140 right away. But if you have a healthy blood sugar, going into the ice bath will boost it to around 140 right away. It's possible we're seeing something similar. We don't have enough data to conclude this, but it's possible we're seeing something similar with cortisol, that the cold exposure normalizes the cortisol rather than provides a uniform, reliable boost. What does that mean for people with PTSD? If you have low cortisol, it's quite possible that the ice bath will give you a long-lasting boost, that is, doing an ice bath in the morning before you do your other therapies, whatever those therapies might be, may accelerate your, res your resolution of your PTSD. And that's quite promising.